We have a spectrum of research and it depends on the question that we're trying to answer. So if I'm trying to understand what drives people's choices, why people make certain decisions, whether a certain treatment that's being proposed for a, a patient group is going to be acceptable and whether they're going to take that treatment, then we might go for the, the choice-based surveys and try and understand what's driving people's preferences. If there's been a big change in policy or a specific intervention in a healthcare system, then big data is the way to go. and We can, we can see what happens before and after the, the change in policy or the intervention comes in. So we've been funded by the CIHR and the Arthritis Society to look at a, a billing code that was introduced in British Columbia which allowed nurses and like, registered nurses to work alongside rheumatologists for a specific group of patients and support the care that they receive. So anecdotally we've heard from patients and rheumatologists that this has been a, a great thing for, for the care of these people. But what we've done is tried to link um, data sets in British Columbia so that we know what medications people are on, what contacts they're having with physicians, whether they're going to hospital, a whole range of different contacts with the healthcare services. And we can look at that before this billing code was introduced and after the billing code was introduced and, and see whether in the people who've been exposed to that nurse consultation alongside the rheumatologist, whether that's changed things like uh, their adherence to treatment, whether it's prevented certain complications they've had, what, what impact it's had on healthcare costs, a whole range of uh, different things, quality of care as well. My, my goal is just to objectively try and see if there are any signals in the data that we have that, that things like adherence are perhaps improving, that there's improvements in quality of care, maybe that we've opened up access to patients um, or potential patients who couldn't get to see a rheumatologist. These kind of things. Are there any signals in the data that say it's a, it's a good thing? If it's a good intervention then I, ideally I'd, I'd like to see it as a, as a sort of model of care for other diseases and also other other types of physicians as well. So at the moment it's restricted to specific types of rheumatic diseases and it's restricted to nurses alongside rheumatologists. But if it's working, like who's to say we couldn't do a similar thing in diabetes or asthma and who's to say we couldn't use pharmacists as working alongside rheumatologists, occupational therapists, all these other kind of specialties that we could bring in and, and kind of generate more holistic care of patients.